This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Last week we reported how Germany and Italy are starting to push back against an EU ban on ICE engines after 2035. Now we're seeing pushback against the latest ICE emission standards that are about to go in place. Those standards are called Euro 7 and they really tighten up NOx emissions. And if Euro 7 is allowed to proceed, Skoda says it will have to close a plant and lay off 3,000 workers, which will in turn take down another 7,000 jobs at supplier companies. Daimler Truck says the tougher standards will cost them billions. And on another front, the Dutch oil company Shell says it will work on reducing its greenhouse gas emissions, but it's not going to set ambitious goals to reduce the emissions from the people and companies that use its products. And all of a sudden, some parts of Europe, which was leading the global charge against climate change, seems to be having second thoughts about how fast and how hard it needs to push. And that may make it seem like the world is going to hell in a handbasket, but things have never been better for Lamborghini. It sold 9,233 cars last year, an all-time record. It brought in more than 2 billion euros in revenue for the first time ever, which is double what the company did as recently as 2017. Its operating margin was 25.9%, an industry record, and its operating income shot up 56%, which is the fifth year in a row that it's gone up. Lambo CEO Stefan Winkelmann and its CFO Paolo Poma patted each other on the back for a job well done. But it looks to us like the credit really goes to the Urus, Lambo's first SUV, which accounted for 58% of all sales. And that should forever put to rest the question about why a sports car company should ever build an SUV. And now we've got some news of our own to report. As many of you have already noted in the comments, we recently passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And when you do that, they send you one of these, a metal plaque and a congratulatory letter from their CEO. Getting over 100,000 subscribers is quite an achievement. And we're grateful for that recognition from YouTube, but more so, for having so many of you follow our reporting, analysis, and coverage of the global automotive industry. And this only inspires us to do even more. So thank you. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Toyota is studying two global megatrends, micromobility and aging populations. So it's expanding its small mobility lineup in Japan. It already offers an electric three-wheeled scooter called the Seawalk T and a tiny EV called the Seapod. And now it's launching what is basically an all-electric wheelchair called the Seawalk S. Aimed more at Japan's aging population, the Seawalk S weighs 58 kilograms or about 128 pounds and features two electric motors that allow it to travel up to six kilometers an hour, which is roughly walking speed with a removable 13.2 amp hour or 0.33 kilowatt hour battery pack the seawalk s can go up to 12 kilometers or just under seven and a half miles at that pace it costs about thirty eight hundred dollars and is actually sold alongside toyota's cars in dealer showrooms as well as at separate rental and leasing stores Tesla is getting a lot of criticism of its full self-driving technology. Elon Musk promised it would reach full autonomy two years ago. But while that hasn't happened, Tesla hasn't given up. And it slowly started a broader rollout of a new version of FSD Beta that was supposed to launch last November. 
The latest version 11 will be a big deal to users because it uses many new neural networks and it's also said to merge autopilot software, which is mainly used for highways, with the FSD software, which is mainly used for surface roads and city streets. The update started going out to the roughly 400,000 Tesla owners who are approved for the FSD beta program, which is reported to be almost everyone that's paid for the package, which now costs $15,000. According to insurance experts, insurance premiums for EVs are going to keep going up. And that's because automakers won't share data on battery packs that are only slightly damaged in collisions. And it's because those packs are not easy to repair. So if an EV battery gets damaged in an accident, in a number of cases, the insurance companies are calling it a total loss because the cost of replacing the pack is so high. According to Reuters, battery packs that are only slightly damaged are also starting to pile up in scrapyards. We think this calls into question cell-to-pack designs, where the battery cells are structural members of the pack, or cell-to-chassis designs, where the cells are a structural member of the chassis. Tesla has started switching to a cell-to-pack setup on some versions of the Model Y. It also had notoriously high insurance rates which is one reason why it started offering its own insurance. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Over a billion people live in Africa, but there isn't much of an auto industry on the continent. However, that's starting to change. Stellantis is going to start producing vehicles in Algeria. It's investing more than $200 million to build a plant, which is expected to be completed in August. Production is expected to kick off by the end of the year. The factory will produce four Fiat models, including the 500, and it will have a capacity of 90,000 vehicles a year. The Inflation Reduction Act, or IRA, is one of the biggest legislative accomplishments of the Biden administration. But several bipartisan members of Congress aren't happy with the way it's going. The Biden administration now wants to make the European Union a free trade partner with the U.S. to help European cars qualify for EV subsidies. If the EU is a free trade partner, then European minerals for batteries will qualify for incentives under the Inflation Reduction Act. The administration is also reportedly working on similar deals with Japan and the United Kingdom. But some in Congress are concerned that this will undermine investments in the U.S. to mine those materials, and they argue that the executive branch shouldn't be negotiating trade deals since the Constitution gives that power to Congress. It's a sticky situation. The U.S. wants to boost domestic EV production, but it also doesn't want to hurt its allies, whose support it needs in dealing with other global issues like Russia's war in Ukraine and confrontational threats from China. People who fill their cars with premium fuel have always paid a higher price, but now it's going even higher. According to the AAA, the price gap between regular unleaded gasoline and premium in the U.S. is now 75 cents, or 15% more than it was a year ago. In the U.K., there's a 25% premium for premium fuel. There are several things that are causing the spike in prices, including Europe cutting off Russian oil, stricter environmental rules in the U.S. that make it harder to produce higher octane gas, and lastly, a general lack of refining capacity. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game.
and by Scheffler. We pioneer motion.